How's that right there? We are live, baby. Gonna be here for a little while taking questions. It's been a while since we uh since we had a live show, man. Like maybe a month or so. A lot going on. Hope you guys are having a great week. It is Friday, April 12th, 2024. We live through the eclipse. Oh my god. Right. So uh I'm I have my own beliefs, right? In my life. And uh and and my people were all going crazy. I don't know about yours, right? But Christians, certain sects of Christians were losing their minds on this, and it was fascinating to watch. <laughs> it was like, you know. There's something about this one that's going to, something bad's happening. You know, it was like this whole thing was going on. There's like 10,000 videos, everybody everywhere talking about how something was coming. All kinds of stuff. It's fascinating. Um, I'm reading right now. I'm in the middle of uh, this uh, scholarly article about the book of Enoch. Man, it's a trip. Scientific perspective on ancient history. You can see where all of the peer influence comes through in this gentleman's opinion. You know what I mean? Despite the fact that Earth is exactly the way it's described in the book, you know, all of the stuff that was left behind is still laying there in the sand. You know what I mean? Like thousands of years later. But no, no, this was supposition from a human mind. This is all made up. It's interesting. It really is. And of course, everybody can go back to whatever they were doing, spending money immediately after reading it. All right. <laughs> I love it. What's up, Jack? What's going on, buddy? We got to get you back down here again. Every time you come, we have like encounters with very scary ones. Last time you were here, Jack. We had an encounter with a very scary creature, and it yelled at us, and then we had some other junk yelling at us. We, that was a scary trip, Jack. What's going on, Yvonne? How are you? Thank you for coming today. Cash, good to see you, man. Raw. That's what I'm saying, right? That's what you want to hear when you're in there, right? Raw. <laughs> Ghost shark. What's going on? Hey, thanks for coming, guys, and thanks for watching. We're not really doing much here. Um we're building the website and uh, and trying to make it better than it was. Um, you know, our ideas were, you know, to put forth something that eventually will rival um, the BFRO because it's not just people's encounters. We went and investigated it afterwards. Here's the video. Here's the place they saw it. And here's the damn creature. This is what we're shooting for, you know, and evidence uh database that contains more than anecdote and denial about other types of cryptids because the reality is is everything's being filtered in that organization right if it doesn't fit the model for what modern day science could possibly accept which they never have right they're trying to fit this like extremely rectangular block into a round hole man it's not going to work right these things are like what they are if we go back in ancient history it's fully explained a bunch of extraterrestrials came here and experimented on whatever creatures were here then pops up man right it's all written it's just that like several cultures have taken it twisted it and been using it to their advantage that's why a lot of this bitching's going on about what's going on in the middle east See, there's a lot of stuff going on nobody is even, like, cognizant of. That this goes all the way back to the tablets. All of that, all of the occupation of that region goes back and points at the fact that somebody in a leadership position believes those tablets are real. They've been fighting over that area for how long? Sooner or later, Americans are going to have to wake up to the reality of what's going on here, right? Right? right. There are corporations manipulating opinions everywhere everywhere so that these agendas can continue this is ridiculous right how does this apply to bigfoot how does it apply to the hominoids there are only direct competition right besides each other right in these regions over there what was it that was pulled from afghanistan and then they vetted the pilot 
when he flew the body of this thing back, it was on coast to coast. Right. It had a spear. It was wearing a loincloth. Like we have soldiers coming forward telling us we're living in the Old Testament. We have data that says that's accurate. But we live in this country that's so far advanced in its thinking that those notions seem ridiculous, right? Is that advancement in thinking or is that ignorant? Yeah, that's ignorant. So when we when we get into this, what are we looking at? What are we looking at? We're looking at denial everywhere. So when we show up here on YouTube with like evidence, we don't expect much given that the entire community online is fake. There's not much you can do about it, right? I mean, when scientists won't take a look at the most incredible evidence they will have ever seen in their entire life, and it's right there on the ground in front of them, and they rub their foot across it to try to get rid of it, what are we dealing with? Because that's what's happening. We've seen it, literally. Employees of the state rubbing out trackways. We going to argue? We watched them do it. You know what I mean? So what are we doing? The same thing as in everything else, right? And the American people who fill these positions of corruption willfully do it. Because I'm nothing, so getting an upper hand over your ass is everything. And that's all this is, man. Trying to climb up the next rung, screwing your neighbor over while you do it telling lies about what you saw on duty last night. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. Not cool. Especially when masses of people would rally to that whistleblower's side if they did come forward. Masses of people. And knowing the gravity of the situation that would be uncovered, you would have plenty of support. Plenty of support. For the threats that you've endured for telling the truth, right? The time is now. See, until people start coming forward, like in these other situations, until people see and understand, they're not gonna, you know? So we encourage everybody to share the work, right? Share the work. Endure the ignorance that comes from showing someone an uncomfortable truth. It's the right thing to do. So we're here and, uh, and we're going to, we're going to try to take a couple of questions now. That's my, my monologue speech about the truth, right? It's not just a story on somebody's channel. It's not. And people are dealing with this all over the place. And everybody's going to have to deal with it sooner or later because of what's happening to the earth, right? And we know it's further along. And we also are now learning that not only is all of that further along than we thought, but we're also learning from data and actual scientific study that this is domino. This is going to domino and it already has started, right? We're over 400 days in a row breaking records for temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean. 400 days in a row, we've consistently set new records. We have, and I don't know if you if you live in the state of Florida, if you live in South Florida, then you had to have recognized the shortages of spring water. Spring water is at a premium right now. They just announced in another video last night, there's something going on where they're doing something with the water additional, though they're not calling it desalinization. They're not trying to cause panic by saying the aquifer is being flooded. But that's what's going on. You can go on yourself and look at desalinization orders up the eastern seaboard pretty much to central Florida, almost to central Florida. It may be in central Florida now because the main springs that everybody drinks, there's been shortages. All kinds of stuff is going on down here. And the media, we can know, we all know already, we're not going to be able to count on these people to cover any of this, right? So what happens, again, when these guys that 
nobody thinks is, you know, in existence, nobody thinks they're real that, you know, live out there. And there's groups of these things. They're enormous. What happens when they run out of water? You do the math, bro. You got a swimming pool? Get a camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is going to be crazy, bro. You know? And so, so what we're, we're seeing is, is I'm watching this closely. As this develops, the lid gets tighter and tighter on the fact that the aquifer is already tainted. No news outlets are bringing this out. You can go look it up online. There is no reporting on the desalinization and that this is happening already. And I know that's what it is, right? They're just letting people individually find out without announcing it because the information can be contained thusly. The behaviors of what? Millions of Floridians, right? They're going to find out slowly that this is happening. You have to do the research yourself. It's already happened. But this is what's going on, right? They understand this chemical causes a disease, but... If they tell everybody that, there's a million lawsuits. So they let it unfold slowly, naturally. Because the reality is they made everybody so damn poor they can't even afford an attorney. This is what's happening in America, right? All of this stuff applies. These same processes apply. If they didn't, History Channel would have went in the field with us. But instead, they got the man method, the corrupt method, right? The, oh, I can't find a guy that signs permits so that the TV people can go in the field with you, Mark. We can't find him. Okay, well, should we come back at four? No, we can't find him, meaning like he's missing. Well, is there a missing persons report? Like, this is the ridiculousness of it, right? Here we are. You guys should know a hell of a lot more or be getting ready to watch what happened on the documentary that the History Channel came in the field with us. You got to understand what's going on here. You're looking at what's real in our films. That's why all this is happening. That's why you see 900 views on what's real and 60,000 on something that may or may not be true, that somebody got an email and now they're talking to somebody on a phone, but everybody's like, and did you notice all of those are always fanciful? Did you notice that? This fanciful or violent, right? In 10 years, we haven't had a violent encounter, and I've been engaging the things, throwing junk at them. No one's touched us, but there's 60,000 violent encounters all over YouTube. I call bullshit. I call bullshit on all of it. What's up, Vicious? What's going down? Blow the frogs, baby. That's right. You know, it's the same thing, right? Everywhere we go, it's the same thing. Nobody says, does, nobody sees, says, does, hears anything about it. And we all know it's happening. And then 10 years later, we're all like, you know, oh, we got this disease from it. And But but what happens? This is the same thing over and over again. So what really is it? It's sleight of hand. The entire country, everything is sleight of hand. There's a bunch of dudes that want to keep their paycheck. Does that surprise you? Don't you? Yeah, that's what this is. But that in and of itself is not justification for the corruption. So what, motherfucker? You can make a choice. It's ridiculous. Selling out everybody over this, right? And there's a host of people who just want to jump right on board with that and sell you out right here on YouTube, right? Don't know me. Never been in the field with me. Never talked to me on the phone. Acting like somehow they slept in my bed with me. <sighs> Until I'm standing in front of you. At which point they usually run. Right. What's up, Bill? <clears throat> What's happening that's real cannot be changed by your words. We're sorry your delusions confound you beyond that. My God, man. What's up? Hey, Sean, what are you doing? Hey, this is Sean's channel right here. It's called Evidence of Existence, right? You guys make sure you check out Sean's channel. Take a minute, man. Sean, Sean comes down all the time. Sean helped me document those giant creatures. Sean was standing right next to me. When we both were staring at something that was over 20 feet tall, man. I figured 18, 20 at max. 
I went back a week later and stood right there, man. This thing was bigger than it was bigger. It was way bigger from where I was standing. If I'd have saw that thing from 50 feet away, I, I don't know, man, you know, seeing, I didn't believe it was real. And I had to get Sean. I didn't say anything. I'm like, you seeing this? And Sean was like, you mean the 20 foot? I was like, yes. <laughs> Thank God he saw it, you know? Check out his channel because he just started it, and uh, and he's going to be doing some hiking on the Appalachian Trail eventually. Uh, he's coming back to Florida. Uh, we we completely support Sean's efforts, right? Uh, anybody else in here got a channel they want to put up? Come on, guys. What are you doing? I know um, the Bigfoot Forest Giants crew, they're doing good work. They're in the field every week. Go on and check out Richard and Jimmy's channel and Bobby. And sometimes Mikey's on there too, as well, uh, from New York. He comes down a, 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 every once in a while, apparently. Um, they're, they're doing good work. They're going in every single day or every single week, and they're collecting evidence. This is what it is. You start building a case for an area, the next thing you know, you're encountering these guys. Because the reality of this is, like, what we found is if you keep going and they're there and you're in that, like, spot, they get irritated about it, right? But I'm still here, right? Nobody bit my arm off or you know anything like that. Uh, and, and they resist trying to show you that they're there, even though they'll throw things or yell at you. You know, it's real hard. You know, you're looking and they're always in the cover. It's like, um, it's like they're aware that something out there is trying to get them. This is, this is like 10 years of being in the field around them. They are so resistant to reveal themselves to you after you've given them a thousand pounds of food. Like they're taking the food and leaving rocks and making stick structures and doing art and all this. And you're leaving the food and they keep leaving their little things for you. And it's like a trade and it's working and it's happening. But at no point was it violent. You know what I mean? And, and in that you start to see that these creatures under no circumstances are trying to reveal themselves to you. And you've obviously established that you're not a threat. So what are they hiding from? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to the extent that the human race will literally argue with you about whether they're real or not. And you think they're hiding from us. There's something worse than us. There's something way worse than us, and they're hiding from that. We just don't know it exists because we've been lied to. See, this is what's really going on. We're blind, right? You can look that up. We can't see 99% of the information around us. It's as if what they said in the historical books is accurate, that we're children and don't understand a damn thing about what's going on. And they do. They do. They understand. It's like it's like they're looking at us like we're fools. Did you ever think about that? I have many times. And I've looked at them while they're looking at me. Looking at my white boots. Looking at my shorts. Looking at my shirt that has a Bigfoot face on it. And then looking at me. You're a fool. That's what he was thinking. And in 10 years of research, I thought about it many times. Why do these creatures hide like this? It ain't me. They were hiding when I came in this place. They were hiding to the extent that I've been in here for 27 years fishing and never saw a track. And have now documented unequivocally that they exist in this place through every means of documentation, scientific. DNA got the traps waiting for academia to catch up with the size of their nuts. In the end, we got the hair, samples, all of it. Images of the creature that ate from the DNA trap. People aren't interested in this, man. They're not. It's sad, but if I took everything we've done and spun it into 15 really scary stories, I'd probably make 50 grand. fun to study for the next two years 
Study's been getting, just so you know, the study's been getting by with less than 20,000 a year for 10 years. And several of those years, the study makes less than 10,000. That's the interest that these clowns have in provenness, right? Despite the fact that everyone who comes says the same thing. And if they don't, they had an agenda to begin with. You can't look at the evidence, the voluminous amount of evidence that we have spanning 10 years. You could probably spend a month and not reach the end of what we have as far as tracks, images, videos of the creatures, thermals, every kind of camera you can think of. We've caught them. We were around them. So we started using cameras. It's not rocket science, man. You know, you just got to find out where they're at and then stop believing all the bullshit that everybody tells you about them. Nothing they say is real. Nothing, man. Nothing. It's like everything is separate out there and the creatures behave like the creatures and the orbs behave like the orbs and this does this and this. Yeah, it's all out there. But how much does it have to do with it when the creatures are hiding from everything? About the same amount as it has to do with you, right? You don't understand what's going on. Why would you assume that the primitives in the bushes understand that's taking it too far there, Science Channel. You know what I mean? But we get this. We get this. Go in any group right now, man, and go look at the posts. You're going to start laughing. It's ridiculous, you know? When all it takes is a can-do attitude, a pair of boots, and, like, a relatively open mind, you know? It's ridiculous, man, and science is acting like this. But I got people in my research areas that have degrees that are studying the deer and the snails, you think they're not wondering why 16 million apple snails are gone? <laughs> kite snails? Like there's only two kites in the whole area. They know what's going on. They can't not. They have to know that all of their data is tainted. All of it. It's the frustration you see when you talk to them about it, right? They're not able to include the keystone species. So they have to come up with ridiculous explanations for why the snail population has been decimated in this one square mile area that has huts all over it. Like, this is asinine, man. Let's slap the shit out of somebody. If they ever pull that shit in front of me, man, you can count on it. Just bail me out. I'm going to jail. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm over it. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Rubbing the tracks out, acting like this and that. Children, dude. Okay, so evidence isn't up and running yet, just so you know. The channel will be up and running soon. I, 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 ho I hope I did actually put a little pressure on you to get that channel up and running, Sean. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't realize. I thought you already had it up, man. You showed me that one day, so... <clears throat> Anyway, Bill, Bill, I am struggling with this show that we did. We I did a show two weeks ago with, with uh, a geologist named William Pagana. Uh, Bill is uh, is a a crypto geologist uh, by not not the side. It's the fringe of geology, and I got to admit, uh, Bill. It's it's a bit above my pay grade. And and so I'm going through it. But but see, I consider that a challenge. You know what I mean? So so I'm going through and I'm reading all your material now and I'm starting to get a little bit better understanding because having done the interview with you afterwards, I realized I think I might have understood about three paragraphs in that two and a half hours. You know what I mean? So I don't want to be putting information out that I don't fully understand myself. And, uh, and so it's taking me some time to get to where I'm starting to understand it, but I'm putting the show together now. And so, yeah, I know you were talking about getting in touch before you went back to work and all that, but look, uh, if I need to call you on a few things, <laughs> I think, I think we're going to end up having to do that. Um, I thought you did great in the interview and I think it's going to go over good, but fringe geology exists. I had no idea. We are literally suffering in every single one of these dis scientific disciplines from 
a generation of scientists that are unwilling to go further. They hit walls, the same walls that anthropologists hit with they encountered the label of mythology as, a, as opposed to, um, you know, indigenous history. Here's indigenous oral history, right? They didn't have a written history. This is history. No, they want to call it tradition because history is too solid. And if they're talking about this and this and this it makes it sound like it might be real. So they get these like clever labels, right? We don't participate in that uh, common understanding. You know what I mean? We just show respect for the indigenous people, right? Because that's disrespectful. You just took their history and labeled it literally publicly, mind you. Fake. Not real. Disney. That's, that's, that's the British Royal Academy culture. That's the culture that was measuring people's heads, saying, well, your brow sticks out more, so you're less of a man. That's all real. You didn't know. That's all real. You can go look it up, and they're still using it and the terms that were developed to keep this subject from coming out. And this is the funny part. Everybody falls in line and uses the terms that keep themselves hostage within the subject. They're still using the terms. Mythology is a racist term when applied to the indigenous people, straight up. Because when you talk to the American Indians, what do they say? Do they call it myth, guy? Do they call it myth? No. So why are you complaining about what's happening to the Hebrews? Why are you complaining about what's happening in Israel? Why are you complaining about what's happening to the Palestinians when the indigenous are still being screwed in this country? How about you raise a hand and say something about them and how their entire culture is decimated and their history is being called fake. You don't want to do that, right? But uphold the colonist movement, right? Whoa, what's going on here? Who's who? Does anybody really know or do you just blindly believe? I guarantee you we have accurate history about how the genocide here in North America occurred. And I guarantee you this country is avoiding dealing with it and showing any equality in those areas. I guarantee you the media is not covering any of that. Reparations. None of that stuff. The tribe my family comes from, the Lumbee, is still arguing with the U.S. government whether we're real. This is the denial. This is the racism. That's the real racism, not this bullshit you see on MSNBC. They're not talking about the real racism. What happens when you pay these people or award these people what they actually deserve? How much land goes back? What happens to the history? Does it become real? Do we understand now that the giants were real? Are we allowed? Is that really what the question is? Does my peer allow me? To think a certain way. Or am I what? A coward. Group think. Go right on ahead. No, we see evidence of the bull in this agenda. Where they're screwing around with things that already been dealt with through the civil rights movement, man. We're not, we're not seeing the actual equality that that's out of balance being dealt with. Not even close. Not even close. And this is with a Native American, in charge of the Department of Interior, right? Isn't that so? Anything changing with the hominoids? Right, because the system exists, and only the ass that sits in the chair is what changes. These are the things we've been trying to get you to see, right? Doesn't matter who they put in that office. Policy. Policy is what has to change, but it can't if the whole time everybody in Bigfoot is running around in circles listening to stories that may or may not be true, why do I fight for this every day? What am I actually fighting for? I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you to wake up. I'm fighting for you to wake up. Wake up before it's too late. Food is medicine. I'm just going to say that, right? Pretty soon, you won't be allowed to say that in America. I'm going to say it again. Food is medicine. 
Peter, what's up, Peter? Yeah, I can see your comments. Why would your comments be blocked? Nope. It doesn't say, uh, I don't have any record of any comments being blocked, Pete. Just to let you know, I'm the administrator and I would see that. So it's possible you had something going on on your end, buddy. Yeah, man. Herbs were given for the healing of nations. That's right, man. Yeah. But you're good, man. There's there's nothing going on. I think you might have had a problem on your end. So we're uh we 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 try to plan campouts again, right? We're having trouble getting permits. What's up with that, right? So what we're doing is we're um since we know what we know, it doesn't matter where we go. As long as the things have been seen there, we'll find them. We're going to track them. So we're, we're picking two different places that have the exact same scenario going on for my study model so that we can then go in and act like tourists, hang around all the people that are swimming and shoot the creatures that are less than 30 feet from us with crystal clear, good zoom lenses. So we have a really good plan. It's more about, can we get, the permits, <laughs> which again, you know what I mean? It's like, this is scary. They just started um, passing this new thing about um, having permits for something in California for guns or whatever. This is the kind of stuff that can happen, right? You have to have a permit to go in this area. Well, they just can't find the guy. So what if you needed a permit for that? Well, what if they just can't find the guy? So this is the kind of stuff that, that's happening, right? The man method. So if they can't employ the man method legally, they'll employ a means that will allow them to employ the man method behind your back illegally. And that's exactly what you see. Legislation that leaves the door open for people to go, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. It was buried underneath something. We didn't see that permit that you needed. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah puts it back in the hands of the individual, which could be what? A political leaning biased individual who, and this is on, this is like where stuff runs a muck in this country, right? Yeah. But it's the same thing, right? Uh, technology. Here's a piece of information for you. Whether you realize it or not, none of the cameras you use are good for shooting and filming these creatures. The cameras themselves are now limited in ways that will prevent you from documenting the creatures. Thermal cameras, for instance, we found there's nothing on the market anymore that will pick up the big creatures. The way the red FLIR, the, the, the FLIR red hot used to, they changed it. You can look it up. It, everything is different now. And, uh, and so if you want a, a good thermal camera, you got to have it custom built. And then you're running a little bit more of an expense, uh, depending on what you want. What I found, too, is I talked to a thermal contractor, and he's going to build our equipment when we do eventually get funding for it, and it actually is cheaper than the ATN that we bought. So I look at that. It's like the ATN doesn't even work, and it's $3,000 more expensive than the camera that I'm having built that will actually see the creatures. So custom equipment is going to be the order of the day. This is something that we found from 10 years of, of having cameras jammed, ruined, um, you name it, man, shooting footage and having the creature right in front of us. We're throwing up all this stuff's going on. People are screaming and the footage is damaged and you can't watch it. It's always one thing after another with this. And then we found a couple of cameras and types of cameras that uh, that will withstand whatever it is that's going on with the interference from uh, the intentional stuff. You know, we filmed the crafts flying around us. Uh, you can go back and see videos here on YouTube where uh, we've got that little, you know, remote control thing flying around. And as soon as it comes near me, my camera dies. And, uh, and this is something that's been going on for a while, right? So whether it's intentional or you're dealing with tremendous biosignals, right? These creatures are enormous. They have electrical fields just like everything else. And so what are we looking at when we're talking about biofield strength or biofield, uh, you know, resonance? How far out does this thing go? These are all things that need to be studied. We're working on all of these kinds of things. However, to study something like their biofields, you have to be around them. 
I don't want to be around these things that close, not those big ones. You know what I mean? So it's like developing experiments where you can leave technologies in certain areas, but then you run the hit or miss. You could come back after a month of measuring and not have a single thing recorded because they didn't pass in front of it or they didn't go near it. You know, it's always hit or miss with these things. That's what makes it so hard to get data. They move around. They have a, a mind of their own. So where they were at on Tuesday, you know, could be that the three rabbit holes are empty that were over there. And now they're on the other side and there's 25 rabbit holes they didn't hit yet, you know. And it is. We're finding out rabbits are uh, the like a primary food source. We, we started looking into the rabbit population just in our local uh, area where we research and it it's like an explosion in certain parts of the, of the research area. There's hundreds of them. Like we've literally seen hundreds of rabbits congregating in the same areas. So we've, we've come to the conclusion that rabbits are probably a huge part of how these creatures are surviving when we don't actively see game in the area or undulates that, you know, would be a, a, a food source. We're seeing like literally hundreds of rabbits. When you see hundreds, you know there's thousands. And, and in that situation, we've got these creatures that are scouring the ground. They're embedding in the ground. This is what we study, you know. It's it's more of a, a more accurate description of what we study would be a more accurate definition would be troglodyte. Troglodyte, the definition of troglodyte fits more like what we're studying. Um all of the colloquialisms have drawn us away from, you know, some very basic understandings and that history and the people who came before us, some of the 80 billion human beings that have been on earth since the beginning, were fully aware that these creatures existed. These are the things that are removed and, and taken out of your way. These are the blocks that prevent you from traveling from one city to another on a horse with a cart through the forest at one time. These were the kind of things that you would avoid. You would have to have people guide you. You would have to have people take you. These are the things that in the dark fairy tales were born from, man. You know what I'm saying? The goblins, the ghouls, all of this stuff. It's the hominoids, you know, as time moves on, they spin it, they make it, you know, into a Disney film. And the next thing you know, Shrek is, you know, popular, but Shrek is real. That's all out there. And that's the part that modern human beings don't understand. When we talk about you are living in the Old Testament, you just don't know it. Stuff is going to start coming that you can't deny. And, uh, and it's going to have to do with our counterparts. Man, we're human, human, variations of man, a variation of man, human, and they're man. They're one of those types. There's several different things going on in there. Witnesses have seen it. I spoke to somebody about a week ago on the telephone, and this is the second time I've heard this in my career. But this person literally says that they've seen one of the ram head hominoids. It's got ram horns. And they're not the only person that I've ever talked to that has seen one of these things. You know? This one was seen in Virginia. It's interesting because somebody my wife knows saw one of these rams headed hominoids with the horns. You're not going to sit there and tell somebody with a doctorate in anthropology that they didn't see what they saw when they were a teenager. It's why they have a doctorate in anthropology. The, the world we live in is ridiculous. It's about denying so that we can continue with this status quo. The world, let me say that again. You know? We're seeing symptoms of the corrupt coverage of reality in the fact that we are here having these conversations. You know what I mean? The general public is told that these people are just ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Right. Okay. And then another one joins our ranks every day and every month who's seen one of these things. And they realize what we realize. 
that there's a systematic removal of this information from our education. It's from the inception or the, the origins of the, of the information. It's all been made to look like these people are too dumb to know whether or not they actually saw these things. How does that make you feel? I'm a part of that culture, so I know how it makes me feel, right? To this day, the woke government that's been installed in the United States has not acknowledged in any way that the Lumbee tribe exists here in the United States. And we're having conversations about whether this aspect of our reality is real. Anthropologist. Why am I an anthropologist? Because I saw this when I was 12, 14, whatever it was. We're denying our own people. This is not, this is not reality, man. You know? It's sad that people think it's okay to insult our intelligence this way. Like we don't know, like we don't see that this is what it is. It's like, no, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? That's really what it is. It's attempt, right? And then what? In those little cracks and holes, there's corrupt, badge-wearing people. Willing to defend all that. You need to take a look at yourself. Because that's the real problem. Right there. You stand up for your principles and you don't have this. You stand up for it. Well, that's the thing, right? Scotty, it's like, oh, I never trusted the government ever. And it's like, you know something? We should be able to, since it's us. So what is it? It's the, it's the way things are being done. So it doesn't matter if you put a saint in that seat. If the process the saint has to engage in enables corruption, we're wasting our time. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like As long as people can continue doing this and the system is set up to allow it, it's, it's one thing when the people have control of that system. It's completely different when control of the system that governs the people has been wrestled away by businesses who are for profit. That's the part that's corrupt, right? And so in the end, it's like a necessity to put people back in charge. And then, you know, of course, do what no one else was ever able to do. In intervention, lobby intervention. If there's not a lobby intervention, it doesn't matter. If there's no lobby intervention, if nobody, if nobody comes in and says, you're not allowed to do this for them so that once you leave office, you can get $22 million, then nothing will change. Who wouldn't legally sign up to help a company that's going to give them $22 million after they leave because they can't receive it now? That would be illegal. That's what they're doing. That's all this corruption is. So when we make that illegal, that will stop. It's not a no, it's like, you know, it's the same thing with Bigfoot, right? People are like, I don't know. Well, you track them the same way you track a raccoon, right? I saw a raccoon. It went back in the tree line. I walked over there and sure enough, to confirm what I saw, there were four raccoon tracks and then they started leading off in the woods and I followed them. And you know what I saw? It wasn't a platypus. It was a raccoon track the Bigfoot. It's that simple, right? This is the same thing in everything. It's real simple. So why isn't it changing? Because people want it that way. People want it that way, right? They're the ones getting paid. Yeah. No, we have a problem in America when people who don't know you feel like they have the right to try to assassinate your character using your name, doing all that. We have a problem in America when people don't understand the definitions of the words they've used to try to describe you. We have a problem in America when people think it's okay for someone to call you a coward from 3,000 miles away, like a bitch, knowing full well, knowing full well who you are.
We have a problem in America when men start acting like that. And they've been acting like that, right? That's like what a middle school girl does. That shit was laughable. Laughable. It's like internet, internet tough guy. Right on, dude. Right on. I got something for you. And you'll get it eventually. I promise. Thank you, Scotty. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, no, no. They're gonna they're they're gonna continue ignoring it, right? Because what I describe without using any of their fucking names is them. The entire the entire crew is fake. They do the same shit every week. It's a formula. It's real simple. I know. I did it for ten years, and then retired from it to go in the field, right? Telling stories constantly, man. Like, that's fucking fine, man. But don't try steering people away from reality, bro. You know, you will rue the day that I do start using names and start coming after people with intellectual capability. You will rue that day. Thankfully, I do have principles. And I do care about your family, despite the fact that you're corrupt. I don't see too many questions today, but, you know, I look at uh, a lot of the stuff that we're going through and the last 10 years has been completely ridiculous on this side of it. The bushes is easy, man. This was going to be, I was like shocked. I was shocked at how quickly we were on them and then like getting evidence. We start bringing it in. Nobody, nobody wants to believe it. Like it's impossible. That's the stories. That's, that's the, the stories doing their work, Right. That's what that is. You think it's impossible because you live online. That ain't gonna do with me, man. You know? No. Break the spells. Yes. Break the spells. It does come down to that. They don't realize that, Pete. <laughs> you know, they're unaware, Pete. They're unaware they're living in the old testament, Pete. It's a trip, man. And it's funny because. Even physicists say it. All timelines exist now. They say it. Yeah. Well, you know, man, just look at all those things. And it's like, look, I asked for the things that did not belong in our way to be removed. I look at things, man, and it's like, look, you know, if, if there's a struggle, something's supposed to be getting, getting out of the way. Some has to go and, uh, and whatever, man. I look at things like very matter of factly. Our mission is simple. People know what we do. Don't come here and act like it ain't real. That's why you came here. Cause it is, you see what's going on, you know? All right, guys. Well, I'm not seeing too many questions about the work today, but it was good doing a live today. I mean, uh, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. I look at it and it's like every time I come back on, I'm looking, I go, last night I went, I went around, I looked in all the groups, same thing, same thing, no changes, same ignorant conversations, despite the fact that evidence and proof exists to contradict all of it. It's a joke and it's laughable and people are afraid to share it in those groups because their viewers are so demented and sick. That's what's going on. You won't share it because you're going to get your ass handed to you. You created this monster with all this anecdote. And now you're going to have to deal with it. And it's going to get way worse. Way worse. Just wait. Just wait. You know? It's okay, though. We've done enough work so that when it eventually comes out, everyone will abscond from your channels right to ours. We're not worried about it. We'll see you guys the next time uh, that we do a live. Uh, oh, if you remember on Patreon, we're putting together the lecture links now. Um, the first lecture is going to be next Sunday. If you came to the last lecture series, that's going to be your lecture. You'll be getting those links for free as a, a thank you. And also the final lecture in the series. So I know a lot of you guys have, uh, 
have been waiting for this. You know, it's almost been a year since that last last uh, study of giants lecture. But, um, you know, the Lyme's disease, the cancer, and now the recovery. We're ready. We're ready. We're moving in that direction, and we are going to do that lecture. So not this Sunday, following Sunday. I'll be shooting you guys the links. Look for that. It's going to be 10 a.m. That'll be private on Zoom. After that, on Patreon, every other Sunday, we're going to do an In the Field live Zoom meeting for all members. So if you're a member of In the Field, you will receive these links via the Zoom messenger and your email to make sure. And uh, Sunday mornings, we're going to do In the Field. You guys can bring all your stuff with you. It's going to be live video conference. So you can attend and, you know, show us if you, you know, bring your evidence, if you have some hair or anything like that. You can go over and ask any questions you want. We'll go over our evidence with you, whatever needs to happen to help you move to the next plateau in your research for documentation. So that's going to be starting. Um, like I said, the first lecture is for the study of giants. And then we're going into the regular every other Sunday, two hour live field research lecture uh, and Q&A. So bring all your stuff. Uh, thanks for joining us over there and supporting the study on Patreon. Um, we work to get this done. That's what we're focused on. And if you go there, you're going to see it, it. It's like that. Um, in addition to that, crypto reality is about hidden reality, man. So you're going to find information from YouTube channels that I subscribe to on there concerning subjects like geology. We have William Pagano and the interview with uh, geologist Bill Pagano coming out here on crypto reality, Patreon. Um, that is fringe geology. As it turns out, geologists aren't willing. It's like, it's like ball back, right? The, the community, the scientific community doesn't want to look at ball back, but they're going to come up with a hypothesis about what happened somehow, right? It's the same thing in geology. There's all this evidence that other stuff has happened and they are unwilling to look at it, man. Bill is covering that. So look for that on uh, Crypto Reality Patreon here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we got a lot going on with expeditions. Mel and I are in the field this weekend. Location to be announced, possibly. We'll see. We have another field uh, get together coming up where I'm going to be in a location and announce it on a Friday and Sunday. You're willing to attend. If you're willing to attend, you're welcome. So um, we're going to pick the location and announce that you can come and hang out and research with us in the field. Maybe we'll end up tracking one live and you can see how I do it. You know, um, we want to start inviting people in. So that's all coming, man. The uh, the illnesses are over and we're, we're we're starting to gain ground. So I would look for quite a bit coming from us here in uh, the remainder of 2024. Thanks for coming today, guys. We appreciate it. And uh, and we'll see you again next time. Join us on Patreon. Support the study, man. You can join free, man. If you can't afford the dollar ninety nine right now, it's not a big deal. Join free. I put some information into free, and we share stuff. And then when you get to two bucks a month, join. There's a ten dollar tier, a, a four dollar tier. There's something for everybody there, and all of it is adjusted. And I try to be fair, and I try to answer any questions. So, if you have any questions, hit me up. CryptoReality.us at gmail.com. Thank you very much for coming, all of you. Uncle Jack, what's going on, man? I did get your text. I don't know if you uh, if you got my back, but I'm down. Jack Shack, that's Uncle Jack. I did his show about two weeks ago. The Jack Shack, buddy. We're going to try to start something. Uh, give me a buzz this weekend, Jack. Let's talk about it. We may be doing a show. I'm also starting another YouTube show, but I think we're going to do it on Twitch instead. I think we're going to end up doing this show on Twitch so that we can talk about what we want. But I'm looking for a co-host. If you're interested in co-hosting with me, yours truly, on a crypto zoologically based show that occasionally we'll talk about other subjects, email me at cryptoreality.us at gmail.com. Send me your resume, man. I've been in this a long time and looking for somebody experienced to do a show. And, uh, and we're going to be pulling no punches on this. We're going after people. We're going after the people that are causing problems. So don't come here looking for the job unless you got the balls to back it up. We'll see you guys next time on Crypto Reality.